Hey guys, welcome back to the Recommend Prepper. So today we're going to be going over programming your TYT MD UV380. Uh, so the MD380 and the 390 and the UV380 are almost basically the same. So first things first, you're going to want to go to tyt888.com up here. Go to download and you're going to want two things. You're going to want your CPS, which is this MD UV380 setup version 1.20. So the setup, it has a bunch of files in it. So you click on the setup application inside the zip file after it downloads. And uh, you're just going to do basically click, hit next, next, and next. It's just like any setup wizard. Then after that, you're also going to want to go down here and get USB driver for digital radio. The reason you're going to want that as well is because Windows had an update and now the drivers do not install automatically, which is a little unfortunate. Then that'll be a zip file as well. Then you have to find the drivers yourself. So you're going to want to go to device manager, if I remember properly. Then after you get through with that, you're going to want to go over here. Uh, you'll have to, it'll pop up both here on your recently added. And it should pop up here as well. But you're going to go CPS MDU V380. And then you're going to want to open it. Uh, when you first open it, it's going to show up in Chinese, so you're going to go 4 over, hit English, then you'll be good to go. So I reset my 380, that way it's the same for me as it is for you guys, so you're going to want to have your radio off when you plug your cable in, and uh, it will, and then you're going to turn it on, as soon as, right after you turn it on, it will come up and do all that. You're going to want to read the device, so the one with the arrow going away. Read time will vary depending on how much info you have on it. With the default, it is very short. And here you will have all your info. That's your basic information. And from there, I like to go to general settings and program everything. So radio name would be... If you're using the DMR function, which I will use, so I'm going to put in my ham call sign. And then 3189116, if I remember right, is my DMR ID. Uh, if you don't remember your DMR ID, you can go to radioid.net. Uh, I'm not going to do it because I don't really feel like doing it. Because um, it's very picky if you forget your password. Then after that, you're going to want to just go through here, set all your stuff. Vox, I never use. You can set up a PC programming password, which is a password someone needs to program or put into the computer if they want to read or write the device at any time. Radio program, this thing does support FPP or front panel programming. It is a little janky. It's not like Bendix King or Motorola. It's, well, it's not as nice. And then intro screen, you can have char string, which is just a bunch of lines. And then intro screen line one, you can do different lines. So what I like to do is Wyatt and KF0HWV. Then once you're through with that, this is where you do you can do a power on password to where they have to put in a password. Eight digits is the minimum and maximum. You cannot do anything else. And then from there. Rest of this stuff is a little confusing. You can set multiple radio IDs to where you just go in and select it, but your radio name stays the same. Then from there, we can close that menu item. This is where you can select all your utilities and stuff. I like to go, I like to have everything in here just because. That way everything's good. And then menu hang time in seconds. That I like to bump up to 10. Then after that you can close that as well. Button definitions is something that I like to deal with. So I the way I did this code plug is I just hit the new. And some of the stuff that is with the default code plug did not transfer over. But side button 1, they work from top to bottom. Your side button for a short press will be your power, which is okay. That's a little annoying. I do not know where it went. 
power select here we go and then long press for that one i like to have as scan on and off and then for this one this is the one with the m on the side of it if you have your 380 with you so i will go to monitor and then for long press i have that be repeater talk around and from there, one touch access. I don't use any of this, so I don't know much about it. And then from there, oh, and one more thing. Long press duration. This is in milliseconds, so one second is your long press. And then from there, you can go to text messaging, privacy setting. This, I believe, is encryption, but I, yeah, it's encryption, but I don't know much about it. And then we will move on to digit emergency system. This is a DMR deal. Um, I'm not sure how you activate the emergency on this on account of this does not have a emergency button on it. The 2016, I believe is what it is, has the emergency button. Digital contact, this is where you would put in your DMR channels or talk groups. So contact name, we'll just put in something that I know. So Skyhub is a ham system around me and then the call ID or talk group 318-915. I do not remember that one off the top of my head. So if we go to my notes, scroll. Yeah, this video is not going to be the nicest one. So. Three ten eight four seven. So three ten eight four seven is Skyhub. Call it receive tone. Uh, you can make it to where you receive a tone when it does a tone when someone keys up on there. And then if you want to add more, you just go add and delete. Then digital receive group call. I have I put all of my contacts in here. I'm not sure if it does anything different, but that's just the way I roll. Um, we're going to skip, uh, we'll go to zone information. So my main zone is always going to be home. Then you have a default channel programmed into here. It's just 400 megahertz analog, nothing fancy. And then from there, you're going to want to go to scan list, home scan. I will, I will go into this a little bit more after we have some channels in here. So if we go to channel information, Pull it up, and then this is where you can do all your stuff. I'll just do four channels that are in my area, so two-meter call. And anyone that's been a ham for any amount of time knows 146520, And then this is something very important. If you're going to use this for hand, or for business, you have to make sure this is on 12.5 kilohertz per FCC rules. For ham stuff you can have it 12 and a half 20 or 25 it does not matter and then from here i like to go in here home zinc can if you do not change this it will just be an open carrier squelch so i set my stuff to three and then down here this is where your ctcss slash dcs would go uh this is a simplex to mirror call no one really uses uh pl tones as far as i know it's analog there are digital simplex frequencies for ham. I do not remember them off the top of my head, though. And then transmit over time, one minute. You, this is your uh, default high or power output. You have high, medium, and low. If I remember right, for VHF, it's 5, 4, and 1. UHF, it's like it's 4, 3, and 1, or 4, 2, and 1. I do not remember. Auto scan makes it to where if you're on this frequency, it will automatically start scanning. Receive only is a transmit inhibit. Lone worker, I do not know much about. Nymphox, voice activated transmission. From there, we will go down again. Click add. And then you get it yourself another channel. I will go 70 centimeter call. That there is 446. If you just leave it without anything else, it'll autofill with all zeros. So 446, 446, scan list. Oh, excuse me. Read watts. And then here in a second, I will show the DMR side of things. We'll add that there. And, and then I will do a 
analog that is um, that is repeated. So this is my local Skyhub repeater, 145.25, 144.6, 144.7, 144.8. Then allow talk around, I like to enable in case you just want to be able to go simplex and still hear the repeater. I like to do that just because. Then, oh, I almost forgot scan list. Then down here, this is your PL tones, CTCSS encode, which is your transmit. It's 1035 uplink, 1035 downlink as well. All this I leave the same. I really don't mess with it. And then this next one, I will... I will do both simplex and a trunk and a uh, repeated DMR. Let me just pull up a local DMR repeater. Then we will be good to go. Okay, so for DMR, we'll I'm just gonna go one four five zero or DMR call. I do not remember what the actual frequency is, so we'll just go 145. I'm not actually going to save this code plug. This is just a sample. And then you're going to want to go here. You're going to click digital. This stuff down here will get locked out. And then the stuff up here will open up. You can do emergency alarm act, data call confirmed, private call confirmed. That call confirmed stuff is for if you do something like TMS on DMR, then emergency system, system one, which we didn't play with, contact name Skyhub, group list will be group list one, color code you have zero through 15, so 16 total, uh, color code one, if I remember properly, indicates that no color code, so you'll hear everything, it's kind of like having no, uh, no PL tone, and then repeater slot, if you know DMR, it has two time slots, so it's time division multiple access, where as something along the lines of P25 would be TDMA or time division multiple access. And call criteria, if I remember, this is for if you have priority scan, I believe. I do not remember. Privacy, this would be your encryption keys, and then privacy number. But as you know, we are not allowed to use encryption on ham radio. So yeah, so DMR call, I'll just throw that in there. And then squelch really is that big of a deal on DMR, but I like to have everything the same. And then a and then a, a DMR repeated. It's essentially the same. Um, so this one's four 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 dot. Oh, my mistake. Four four five dot. 025 we have multiple repeaters running at the same site and then standard offset is plus or minus five megahertz for two meter and then plus or minus five or 0.6 megahertz on two meter so we'll go there then 025 digital scan list Squelch of three, contact name, group name, color code, repeaters, uh, color code, I believe it's five. I don't remember off the top of my head. And then from here, a lot of talk around. Then what all this? That is it for programming channels. DTMF signaling. This is a pretty cool feature. This is where you can do. So system, PTT ID, pre only, post only, pre and post. So pre only means it'll only do the DTMF at the beginning of the transmission. So you push a button, does DTMF, then you talk. Then you can do post only where it does it at the end, or you can do both. First stage delay, and then this is all delay times and intervals. So how much time is between each key and how much of a delay at the beginning. Things like that. So key up in code, I'll go. 1255 is my number on a part 90 system, so up and down. DTMF side tone, enable. We'll go pre only. I just put it in as key up and key down just to make everything easy. That's system one. 
encode is one and then decode response type that would be if you want to have your so decode would be it would either page or kill your radio which is where this kill basically means it is inoperable and it'll stay inoperable until someone uh, does the uh, alive tone so and then the ACK encode all that good stuff and this is where you would set up your DTMF ID to stun or activate it and then we'll go back up here now that we have channels go to zone information copy all those I have them on both A and B that way I can have dual monitor and I'm not scanning because scanning is great and all but if it's if you have stuff you really don't want to miss, it's only on two channels, you can do that. And then priority channel, this basically means, so for example, you're sitting on into SKY, or you're sitting on anything, and someone comes across on into SKY, it will automatically kick the you off that frequency and go to that one, priority channel two. So priority channel one is, top, is the highest, and then channel two is next. If that's going on though on either of those it'll continue to scan and signaling hold time and then priority sample time then we can add more scan lists if you want more zones if you desire to have more frequencies and then from there you are going to want to write to the radio and then this takes about the same time no matter how big or small your code plug is so while that's going uh, my thoughts on the 380 between now and that review I did a few months ago. I still like it. It's still a very nice radio. The The stock mic was a little bit of junk that I bought online, uh, like the external mic. But other than that, overall, great quality. I've dropped it several times, uh, both in and out of a case, and it has survived and uh so yeah overall nice radio so right dad successful what i do is i always save my code plugs so this will be sample code plug and then if you were to go to your radio it will be all the same and then yeah so if anyone has any questions feel free to reach out uh about the 380s and any other most any other radios i have experience with quite a few some i do not own at the moment some were friends radios and things like of that nature so yeah if you have any questions feel free to watch, reach out uh recommend prepper